Hi all, welcome to our video. In this video, I will explain what is low delta T syndrome of chillers in hydronic cooling systems. First of all, we can go through a primary secondary chiller loop. So this is the chiller. These are primary pumps, which will help to circulate the water through the chiller. And uh, these are secondaries. From the chiller out, it will take suction and will discharge the water through the airside equipments in the building. Airside equipments like air handling unit HU or fan coil unit FCU, etc. Before going to the explanation, we should calculate how much chilled water flow rate is required through each equipment. Say, each chiller is having a cooling capacity of 200 tons of refrigeration. We can calculate the flow rate using the equation Q is equal to MCP delta T. Here, Q is chiller coil load in kilowatt. If it is 200 ton of refrigeration, you can convert ton of refrigeration in kilowatt by multiplying 3.516. So 200 into 3.516, you will get around 703.2 kilowatt. CP is a constant that is called a specific heat of water. The value is 4.196 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Delta T is the difference between chiller entering water temperature in degree Celsius minus chiller leaving water temperature in degree Celsius. Chiller entering water temperature, here I am considering 13 degrees Celsius and leaving water temperature that I am considering 4 degrees Celsius. So the delta T of chiller I have considered in 9 degrees Celsius. By the calculation, I will get the mass flow rate of water in kilogram per second. So I will be getting around 18.66 kilogram per second. So water is the standard fluid. So the volume flow rate of water and the mass flow rate of water is same. So the volume flow rate of water what we required is 18.66 liter per second. So it is clear that each chiller is able to extract 200 tons of refrigeration from the building with 18.66 liter per second of volume flow rate. In the same way, all the equipments in this loop will be having coil load, flow rate and delta T. At the time of water balancing, these flow rate should be balanced in the circuit to achieve proper cooling. Generally, we will be using a set of control and balancing valves in the return side of equipment to control and balance the water flow. To control the flow and equipment on-off purpose, we will be using a two-way motorized valve or three-way motorized valve. And for balancing a double regulating valve or a pressure independent control valve, we can use. Anyhow, which valve we should use in the circuit is totally depending upon the type of chilled water circuit. If it is a constant flow system for control and on off purpose, we can use a three way motorized valve and for balancing a double regulating valve. If it is a variable flow system for control and on off purpose, we can use a two way or three way motorized valve and a double regulating valve will do the balancing or a pressure independent control valve we can use for control, on off purpose and balancing. Anyhow, I will do a detailed another video later about uh, chilled water valves. Okay, so all the balancing valves in the loop has calibrated for required flow rate by considering the differential pressure between it. Suppose, if we are using a double regulating valve for balancing, the flow rate through it will vary if any changes happens in its inlet pressure and leaving pressure, that is so called differential pressure. At the time of water balancing, we will be calculating the differential pressure between the balancing valve and we will set the valve for required flow rate using valve manufacturer's data. But it's not 100% balanced system. Any changes in the differential pressure causes change in flow rate. So this system we have designed with a delta T of 9 degrees Celsius. Consider the CHE. The inlet temperature is 4 degrees Celsius and leaving temperature is 13 degrees Celsius. So delta T is 9 degrees Celsius. If this AHU is not working and it is off, so the control valve will stop the flow 
and the unwanted water fluoride without extracting the heat from this HU will be going to the nearby machines. So here we are having a fan coil unit. The unwanted chilled water from HU will become an excess fluoride for this fan coil unit. If the fluoride is more than the requirement, the inlet pressure to the double regulating balancing valve of this fan coil unit will increase that causes the change in differential pressure that we have used to balance it. Thereby, change in flow rate occurs. If this AHU is not working, due to increase in mass flow rate, now the delta T of fan coil unit has changed. Say, if the delta T is 4 now instead of the previous 9 degrees Celsius. So, what will be the outlet temperature? Outlet temperature will become 8 degrees Celsius instead of 13 degrees Celsius. So, this 8 degrees Celsius of returned chilled water will be going back to the chiller. Chiller should need the minimum flow rate always. That's why we are using the primary pump. The chiller delta T is 9 degrees Celsius that is fixed as per the design calculation. Now for chiller case, what is the leaving chilled water temperature now? Chiller inlet temperature is 8 degrees Celsius and delta T is 9 degrees Celsius. So the leaving temperature will become minus 1 degree Celsius. Water will freeze at this temperature and it should not happen. This is called low delta T syndrome. Means the reduction in chilled water temperature range is called low delta T syndrome. Not only due to the change in differential pressure. This can happen due to various reasons. If the heat transfer through the air side equipment's coil is not proper by air contaminants or dust or the flow rate of water through the coils are high or any problems in pump variable speed drive or problems in control and balancing valves all these causes low delta T syndrome by resetting the chilled water supply temperature of chiller or by increasing the chilled water flow rate through chiller we can avoid low delta T syndrome but uh, both the methods are not energy efficient. Nowadays, uh, we are having pressure independent control valve as balancing valve. So irrespective of the difference in differential pressure, it will always give constant chilled water flow rate. Also, balancing is only required at the beginning. Nowadays, it is more sophisticated by automation. So, hope this video is informative. Thank you.